If you pick a direction to go and it doesn't work out, there's nothing wrong with admitting you're wrong and making a different choice. Unfortunately, this blower represents that very idea. Now, I was very certain that everything I did was going to get it to start and run, but unfortunately, it simply didn't work out that way. I guess there's nothing wrong with having a second go at it. Hopefully, we can get it to work. Otherwise, I might have to rethink my approach to this strange problem. In today's video, we're going to look at this vintage Echo Backpack Blower, and the problem is that it won't start. Now, I did service the car, but even after doing that, it still didn't start. This time, I'm going to use a very unorthodox method to get it to work, and if it doesn't work, well, we'll talk about it when we get to that bridge. Now, I'm going to try and repair this leaf blower, but yours might be a little different, so it might not work on yours. If things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, if you didn't see the last video on this blower, we found out that it would start and run after putting fuel into the engine. That confirmed that it had spark and also enough compression to run. But just to be thorough, we also performed a compression test just to make sure the engine was not worn out and that it was also healthy. What we got was an extremely good reading of over 166 PSI. We then knew that putting any time and more importantly money into this project was going to result in a good working blower, or at least that's what I thought it was going to do. After taking the carb off the engine and giving it a light servicing, which also included replacing a warped metering diaphragm and cleaning what I could on the carb, I then put it back together thinking it was going to work. Now since this system does not have a purge bulb to help get air out of the lines and get fuel to the carb, I did physically prime the engine to help get the fuel system purged of any air, and of course, as you guessed, things didn't go according to plan. After multiple attempts of starting it with and without priming it with fuel, the engine would simply not stay running. It was very apparent that the pumping diaphragm was not doing its job of pulling fuel from the tank, so this is when I got kind of desperate. Now a very inexpensive test to see if the pumping diaphragm was the issue is to soak it in my rejuvenation bath for at least a day if not more, and see if we can get it to soften up so it works like it should. Now because of the weather, I wasn't able to get back to it for about 4 days, but it finally cleared up enough to give it another try. So in the last video on this blower, I received a lot of comments and suggestions on what the issue might be. One of the comments had to do with the fuel line and the filter. Now in hindsight, I probably should have changed the line to a yellow fuel line and that way we'd be able to at least see if any fuel was being pulled up to the carb. Now in my defense, I did check the line for cracks, leaks, and blockages off camera thinking it was not going to be an issue. Since we now have an issue, I guess the best choice would be to replace the fuel line and inspect the filter. After inspecting the fuel filter, it looks to be in great shape, so I'm going to reuse it. I'm also going to use this yellow fuel line, and even though it's not real Tigon fuel line, it should hold up better than the clear stuff. And as you'll see here in a bit, this fuel line is going to work to our advantage. Now after passing the line through the grommet, I'll then push the line into the grommet opening, fish out the line, and then install a lock ring and the filter. After that, I'll then wrestle the grommet back into the opening. If you want to use some lube to make it easier, that would be a smart idea. If you think your filter might be clogged or just can't tell if there's something wrong with it, then just replace it. They are typically not very expensive, but if you want to make it a better deal, try buying several at once instead of just a single. Now after we get done with the filter line, I'm going to replace the shorter impulse line from the block. I don't think this was the issue, but it's only a few inches of line, so it's not a big deal. Oh, before I cut the line, I'm going to connect it to my chemical bottle. The reason is I want to see if I can see the pulses coming from the engine when I pull on the rope. The reason I need to check is because the pulses from the engine help to work the pumping diaphragm inside the carb, and if I don't see any pulses from that line, the pump is not going to work to pull any fuel from the tank. Now for this test, I don't need to fight the engine compression, so I'm going to remove the spark plug to make it easier to pull. That means every time I pull on the rope, you should see some fuel pulse in the pickup tube inside the bottle. Fortunately, you can see the fuel pulsing in the pickup tube inside the bottle. That would confirm that we do indeed have pulses coming from the engine to work the pump inside the carb. The next thing I'm going to do, even though it's a bit early, is to put some fuel into the tank and move on to the carb. So technically, it's been 96 hours since I put the pumping diaphragm in the bath, but I have seen results in as little as 24 hours. It just depends on the condition of the diaphragm. 
Now, this method is not a guarantee that it's going to work, but it will work in confirming that the pumping diaphragm was the reason why the engine was not starting in the last video. Now, after installing the diaphragm into the carb and then installing the carb back onto the engine, we'll then see if the engine will start and run. And if it does run, then we'll decide on what to do after that. But if it doesn't start and run, we'll have to go a step further in the diagnostic, which is not going to be fun at all because we might have to go further than anyone should really have to. Now because this blower was so popular decades ago and because they're still around now, we can still order a lot of the parts for it and if I have to, I might just order a new carb. Now if for some reason you don't want to replace the OEM carb with a cheap aftermarket one, you could also just order a carb rebuild kit as well. Also the throttle cable for this blower is a bit sticky after having worked on the anchor for the cable in the last video, I'm also going to lubricate both ends of this cable and after doing it, it's now working a lot better and we shouldn't have any issues with it for quite some time. Now while the filter base was off the engine, I did look at the pivot for the choke lever, but unfortunately it cannot be adjusted, but I do have an idea on how to deal with it. Now the first clue that the pumping diaphragm is even going to work is if we see fuel coming up the filter line when we pull on the rope. Just to make it easier to film, I'm going to remove the spark plug again, but it's not necessary. As you can see, fuel did make its way up the filter line into the carb, which is great news. It confirms that the pump is working just like it should. That means our chances for this engine to start and run is extremely good in comparison to the last time we tried it. Now I may not have to, but I am going to prime the engine with fuel just because I want to make sure this engine has the best chance to start and run. The last thing we need to do is to put the intake boot back on and then try starting it. Hopefully it works this time. So what did I just do? Well, when I finally got the engine to stay running, I wanted to tune the H screw, which is used to adjust the fuel delivery at full speed. I then set the throttle to full speed, then I turned the H screw back and forth, trying to find when the engine was at full speed. I then turned it counterclockwise just enough to lower the engine speed. The extra fuel will keep the engine from burning up, and believe me, it's happened to me before. After that, I then turned the L screw to find when the engine would rev up without hesitation. 
Now the choke lever is held in place with what looks like a pressed rivet, which is kind of strange. Now I did try to press it some more, and even though it was better, I was afraid to damage it, and then I'd have to replace it. So instead of using the string, I'm going to try a different method. I'm going to put this wire around the base of the lever, and then twist it so that the lever has to work against it. I know if my coworkers saw me doing this, they'd give me a hard time, but since I didn't have my safety wire pliers with me, I think they'll give me a pass. I'll then cut off the extra, and then bend it out of the way, and then test if it works. Now it seems to be holding any position I put it in which is great news, the only thing left to do is to test out the blower. So it seems to be working just the way it should, which is much better than the way the last video ended. To be honest, I knew the carb was the issue from the beginning, and I probably should have just ordered it and replaced it with little to no fuss, but what's the fun in doing that? Besides, the metering diaphragm and the fuel line came out to be a staggering $3. And a new carb would have been at least $15 to $19, depending upon where you get them from. Now call me a penny pincher, but that's a lot of pennies I just saved. So what do I think about this Echo Blower? Well, it's nice. For its size, it's not bad at all. The only complaint is the weight. It feels like I've got a large battery strapped to my back, but to be honest, it's better than some of the kids' toys I've used before. I'm most impressed by the build quality, though. I wish more blowers were built like this, but with the cost of materials, labor, and corporate greed, it would be priced out of the range of most homeowners, and only lawn care companies would want to buy them. So in the end, it was the carb this time, and I should have known better, but when trying to save some money on parts, you're going to pay for it with your time. So my question is, would you have just bought the carb in the first place once it didn't start after servicing it the first time, or would you have kept at it like I did and in the end saved a couple of bucks? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.